our church here, we believe that God appointed the high priest that we have, amen, in such a way that we follow, and that is by an order of God, amen, we follow our pastor, and we will find this in verse 5, sorry, in, in chapter 5, verse 4, where it says that no one takes this honor on himself, but receives it when called by God, and so this honor was placed upon even our pastor that we have, even the other pastors that we have, it was an honor placed on them by God. It is not up to us to say anything, but it's up to God. Amen. This calling requires faith. Faith from the pastor, faith from the congregation. Because as a congregation, we are also following. We listen to the teachings. We understand the teachings. We dissect the teachings. We try and understand it from what God is trying to tell us. Amen. And in that, we need faith and we need understanding. We need discernment to be able to, first and foremost, follow the correct man of God that God has placed in our lives. Many of us have different other pastors that we might listen to. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's in this particular church, but that pastor or those pastors have some sort of anointing because they were appointed by God, but not all of them. Amen. And in that, we need faith, we need understanding, we need discernment to ensure that we follow the correct man or woman of God. Amen. In order to uphold this kind of faith, this is a faith of salvation. And the faith of salvation, we will find it also being discussed in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 10, where it speaks of the faith of that we have in Jesus Christ, but the faith of salvation. Amen. And Jesus is our salvation. And the faith that we have is the faith in our salvation. Amen. In this particular case, you can also think of it to say that faith mostly goes with some sort of, um, we say like faith with works, but if we read James 2.26, we can see that not just that we have faith, but we need to also do some things ourselves as well. And those things are very simple. We follow the Bible to say that we need to be in right standing with God. Amen. And that means that we are actively praying. We are actively seeking the face of God. We are actively helping one another. We are actively making sure that we come together as saints. We do what the Bible wants us to do. Because that means that we believe in our faith and we're also prepared to do something about it. If we talk about it in terms of church, we talk about ministry. There are many ministries where everyone can be involved. And that is now showing that you believe in your faith. And you're prepared to go even further about your beliefs. Amen. And that is just showing as well that we believe in Jesus Christ as our high priest. And we will follow him and do what he wants us to do according to the Bible according to his will. Amen. We look at Jesus and we can agree that he went through a lot here on earth. And even the Bible here explains that Jesus went through 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 temptation, but he managed to overcome that temptation. But the Bible is very specific to also say that even the man of God that is placed in front of us also has weaknesses. Just like how we see God or Jesus rather taking on these challenges so does the man of God that has been placed in our congregation also going to go through challenges there will also be times of weakness um, many times you will hear of other churches where maybe they fight with the so-called man of God of that church and sometimes things become even worse things just don't go the way that they were supposed to but these are the challenges that the high priest has on I would say a daily basis what they're always thinking about the congregation and so these things become difficult for not only Jesus at that time who he managed to get through it but it's also difficult for us but the Bible says that even the high priest has weaknesses and we need to acknowledge that there are certain weaknesses there are certain shortcomings amen Jesus was able to make it through, and we can also do the same. We also face challenges, and we also face our own triumphs, 
whether it is under the banners of a high priest or not, we still face challenges. And we must remember that God is actually on our side in all cases. And the way that I like to think of it is to say that we need to follow what Second Chronicles 15 verse 7 says. And it says, be strong and courageous, do not give up, for your works in the Lord will be rewarded. And we need to remember that because as we also go through our trials and tribulations, we need to also remember that God is on our side and God is going to help us to ensure that we can also make it through in, 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 in all circumstances and, and, and that I believe. Amen. Furthermore, it speaks here about approaching God with confidence. This confidence, I would believe, would be almost the same type of confidence where a child can go to a parent and ask for a sweet, something so small, you know, where sometimes we think we can't ask God for certain things. We are shy, we are fearful, we are doubtful of even what the small things God can do. Sometimes, maybe even the bigger things might be even just as worse. However, it explains here that we need to approach God with confidence, confidence in way that he will come through for us that he will be our provider that he will be our healer in time of need and he will guide us in all trials and tribulation we need to approach the throne of mercy with confidence amen and this confidence we've seen with jesus jesus was praying all the time he was constantly in prayer constantly in communication with god and that is another point that we must take from Jesus and what Jesus was doing here on earth. In this case here, we can also look at um, uh, verse, verse 16. Okay, yeah, the, the, the supporting verse was verse 16. I just wanted to Verse 16. Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So mostly, we, most, most of us, it, 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 let me say most people in general, when they actually go and approach God, there's normally a problem or there's normally something that we need to ask God for. And that means that we need to be able to ask with confidence knowing that He will grant us that grace and that mercy give us what we ask in his will amen and we can also read psalm 100 verse 4 let me just go see that. so the supporting verse as well there is psalm 100 verse 4 i just want to Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Amen. Amen. So God will appoint a high priest and people will bring their burdens to that high priest. Sometimes I'm sure a lot of us, we're not so sure who to talk to about our problems, who to... Um, get to in terms of someone that might help us someone that might even give us a, 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 an open ear to counsel us, to guide us and to give us that certain direction and the, 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 the Bible here is showing us that the man of God we would go to the man of God as the saints of, uh, as a congregation would go to the man of God and tell the man of God what our issues are and the man of God would then go and pray on our behalf and we hear it all the time that pastor's praying for us on a Monday we know it's on a Monday morning amen and so I believe that it's not just on a Monday morning we just know specifically that it's on a Monday morning but these prayers we as a church also need to be strong enough to go to the pastor and explain our issues and ask the pastor to pray and intercede on our behalf because that is biblical that is what the man of God does and the man of God will then send our prayer on our behalf even giving of sacrifices where necessary amen and so jesus right now is that person that 
or let me say Jesus is who we would go to and also ask because he himself is also interceding on our behalf, interceding next to the Father on the throne, interceding for our transgressions, even for those that do not have a voice, for those that are not even saved as yet. He's also doing that. He's praying for them. Amen. And we'll find that in John chapter 17 from 20 to 26. In this case here, Jesus became our high priest, whether it was on earth or in heaven. And we must pray and give him glory. But we also know that we cannot go to the Father unless if through Jesus Christ, this high priest. Amen. And in this, we need to ensure that when we pray and when we um, go to God or to the throne of mercy, we need to go through this ultimate high priest, which is Jesus Christ. Without him, we can't access the throne. We can't access the Father. And that is most important. And we know this also according to John 14, verse 6. No one comes to the Father but through me, and he is Jesus Christ. And with that, we are going to go into prayer. Amen. Let us stand this evening and... Let us go into a time of prayer. Our first prayer point is to pray for strength and for more faith. To, for us to do what is needed for our faith. So in other words, to pray for more faith and strength. Strength for the actions that we need to do. To help us in this salvation faith that we have. Amen. Let us pray. name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The supporting verse for our prayer points for the first one was Ephesians chapter 2 from 8 to 10 and James 2 verse 26. Our second prayer point is to pray for wisdom and discernment to select the, sorry, to select and follow a high priest ordered by God. Many times we find ourselves listening to other pastors and engaging with other pastors and following other pastors, not just our own pastor, but that God help us and direct us to pastors that preach the word of God, that preach without discrimination, without looking at 
what is being preached, but just that it's being preached in the name of Jesus. We must pray that we have that wisdom to discern and to select that priest that we choose to listen to and that we follow what God wants us to do in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. third prayer point is for us to pray that our steps are ordered by the Lord. Pray that your steps are ordered by the Lord. We know according to Psalm chapter 1 that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord and we need to become more righteous that we can have our guidance in Christ that it is God that guides us and puts us where he wants us to be according to the will of God. Amen. Let us pray that God orders our steps and that we become righteous. Amen. Last prayer point is to pray for all our pastors that we have all the pastors in all the different AFM branches, including our main pastor. But just to pray for the pastors that whatever they go through, that first and foremost they have support from the congregation. Let us pray that.
whatever weaknesses they have, that we as a congregation and you, God, that we can triumph over those weaknesses and together we can all receive God in the same way. Let us pray for all pastors and all the high priest that has been selected, that God give them strength to deal with the, their weaknesses and everything on their own. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Jesus, in the name of 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 Jesus, let's shout amen.